Hey there, it's Ike with Big Text Ordnance, and today we are here with Jordan from Badger, and we're just been going over the why and how the C1 mount um, came to be about, and kind of a little bit of history behind it and what all went into it. Jordan, thanks for coming down. Yeah, wanna... thanks, Ike, for, for having us. Yeah, so the C1, when we started this project, we wanted a truly modular hub from everything from the precision rifle shooter to carbine enthusiast to the person that would be using this uh, LPVO for work to your snipers. Uh, and we wanted one single hub that could use a myriad of accessories, whether it's data boards to uh, offset red dots, or laser range finders or bubble levels. And we wanted one hub where everything could be attached and not riding off of a handguard, like say the 416, which needs to be removed to clean or um, something that could flex or move. We just wanted it on one hub on the mount. So that's how this started. And we got going down the road of uh, starting with the C1 products. And it just really kind of flew from there, from one uh, accessory, which was the offset red dot to now about you know 25 different accessories that we have for it. So as far as like intellectual property and like patent stuff that y'all have, are there any specific patents to the C1? Yeah, there sure are. So uh, our C1 uses a patented taper fit, uh, these ports that you see in the, the uh, front and back and the right and left hand side. There is a, a taper around here that has two screws that come in, the attachments, whether it's the offset red dot or the bubble level or the data board, they all work off that hub. I and mean, that's the technology we uh, developed and everything's evolved from that, that taper fit. So the first accessory that y'all came out with was this offset J-arm um, for running a, a, a micro dot. How did y'all come up with that and why the angle that it's at, how did that come to be? Yeah, uh, great question. So we, we'd we had some experience, uh, you know, in my my other work experience when I was in of running red dots off the side of optics, whether it's off of ACOGs or scopes. And uh, a lot of them at the time were 45 degrees off the scope body, not so much off the bore. So what you'd see in certain drills were guys shooting low right every time. You know, you're, you're not only doing an offset for vertical, but you're doing a diagonal offset. So from the start, we wanted this to be, when you roll this over and you have the bottom of the window, which is your reference point, yeah. when you're rolling an optic over, you know, we don't typically like to roll over to there. It's, we, we find flat, right? We find the bottom of things. So you roll this over and this is going to be, this specific one, 45 degrees off the bore and it's going to be 1.70 height. Now we have different angles and different heights, but that's how it started. We wanted a true offset that was exactly like your primary optic. You turn it over and your, your offset and your hold is the exact same. There's no extra work. If you know your, your hold and your offset on this primary optic, you got it on your secondary. So that's why we wanted that instead of off the, off the tube itself. And as far as attaching it to the rail, how do y'all go about that? I noticed you got some lugs here. Yeah, so the way our C1 uh, mounts work, and the way all Badger mounts have always worked, you know, there's kind of two different ways of doing it. And there's the Picatinny style, mm -hmm. which is uh, where the angles of the clamp feet, they grab those four angles on a rail. And that's fine. There's not anything necessarily wrong with that. Um, then there's the stand egg way, and that's basically pulling the whole mount down on top of the, the top of the rail. Now there's, there's gives and takes on both. Um, what I'll say is the, the Pictini spec is kind of all over the place. There's a lot of tolerance uh, stacking involved. So we actually grab that bottom, that 45 degree on the, the rails and we pull our mounts down straight on top gotcha. of the rail. And we're not the only ones that do that. Um, a lot of great mount manufacturers out there do that, but it's it's been what we've been doing for over 30 years on mounts. You know, it's we've had everything from the mounts on M40s to Mark 13s, SR25s to now the Barrett MRAD uh, Mark 22. And that's the best way we found to mount a mount to your scope or to your rail. Awesome. So you've got the C1 that's that's been out for a, mm -hmm. a pretty decent amount of time. Y'all just recently came out with a C1 Max. Yep. What's, what's that about? Yeah, so our C1 Max, which we have here, the C1 standard was really, you know, when we first designed it, we designed it with carbines in mind. Yep. That's not to say that you can't mount it on a bulk and you can, and uh, it's mounted, you know, it's the issued mount on the Mark 22 MRAT. But we wanted to kind of lean on our lineage, like our Max 50 rings, and go back to a more bolt gun oriented mount. So we made the C1 Max, and it's one inch wide rings, just like our uh, Max 50 rings were, and a low profile clamp foot. 
uh, that you see here. So you're not gonna have anything that's gonna really get in the way of your bolt handle operation, um, anything like that. It's just a more stout mount uh, if you're using like Magnum bolt action rifles or lightweight mountain rifles. And it doesn't have any forward cantilever because a lot of the bolt guns out there don't need that forward cantilever to get eye relief. AR-15, you've got a handguard, you don't want to bridge that gap. You need that forward cantilever to get your eye relief. Not so much this. So this was designed with that precision rifle shooter or bolt action sniper rifle really in mind. Gotcha. Will C1 accessories from the carbine side or the regular C1 work with the max? Absolutely, yeah. The, uh, all the accessories barring the bubble level will work with the C1 Max, however, the C1 Max has its own bubble level. So if you want that, that level for long range precision shooting, we still have one, you just have to get the C1 Max specific one. Gotcha. And that'll work on the standard C1s, just oh, not really? the other way. Yeah. Why is that? Really, it was just the design uh, for strength. We needed some, uh, some extra material here at the bottom because we get these lower than we do our standard C1s. These go down to 1.3 inch tall. So I wanted some more material. To get that, I just needed standoff on the bubble level on the stem, so. That makes sense. Had to be, and uh, I'd rather not compromise the main design for backwards compatibility, so. We made it the way we thought it needed to be. It's a fair trade-off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been really cool to have all these mounts just kind of all here on the table and be able to look at them and compare the differences and everything. Thanks for coming out. Absolutely, um, thanks for having us down. Yeah, absolutely. And if y'all have any questions or anything that we missed that you might be curious about, his, leave us a comment there and um, let us know any feedback you have. But we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.